Uh, so, okay guys, this will be the third lesson. Um, it's been a while since I uh, made a lesson, you know, there was like a short one or two day break, so uh, forgive me for that. Um, anyways, uh, last time we went over um, at the school subject verb agreement, we did a bit of idioms and prepositions, right, that was last, last lesson. Today I want to I want to go through the modifiers. Um, are there questions? We may also do some of these questions. Uh, and uh, finally, run on sentences. I think those two will be it. And um, below that we have well, there's some um, practice questions. Maybe we can do a bit of that fragments. It's kind of you know goes together with run on, so I might I might do it if we have time. If not, I'll leave it for next time. So, anyways, um, we'll start with modifiers. You know, another similar to you know prepositions, like one of those uh, grammar things. So let's just start off with this first example. Recognize what's funny about the sentence. So after being beaten and deflated, the baker shaped and seasoned the dough. The dough. So I hope you see it immediately. After being beaten and deflated. The baker was beaten and deflated. Um, well, I mean that's you know possible, but that's very weird, and I don't think that's what the writer of the sentence was implying, right? Uh, I think he meant the dough was being beaten and deflated, right? Not the baker. So that's you know the funny thing about the sentence, and um, this is where modifiers come in. Essentially, you know, there are a lot of sentences like these. A lot of times you'll find sentences like these that aren't, you know, clear. You might get what they're saying, but they're not clear and they can easily be um, misinterpreted. That's why modifiers come in, you know, they make things clear. So, you know, if you put a modifier here, um, well, this one already had a modifier before, but it was misplaced. If we put it in the correct position, if we do it properly, we can write, after being beaten and deflated, the dough, not the baker, if you, if you put the baker after that, people are going to assume that the beaten and deflated, those actions were done to the baker. So you got to put the dough, you know, after that description. After being beaten and deflated, the dough was shaped and seasoned by the baker. Who's, who's you know, shaped and seasoned? The baker who was beaten and deflated, the dough. So, you know, that's how you would structure it so the sense makes more sense. Got a few examples over here. I bought a house from the local bakery made of gingerbread. Um, so you bought a house from a local bakery. That bakery was made of gingerbread. That's the you know, you know the the understanding that I'm getting. But obviously, you mean a gingerbread house. You bought that from a local bakery. So it's it said I bought a house made of gingerbread from a local bakery. You know, a, a very easy way to fix this, keep in mind, you know, the things you're describing, keep them close to each other, right? So, you bought a house, gingerbread, that's a description for the house, and the bakery's a description for the gingerbread and the house. So, you know, you want to keep the house and gingerbread close to each other, near each other, and um, keep the local bakery, that word, away. So, I bought a house made of gingerbread, you're putting those two words, you know, close to each other. So they can associate. So the reader can associate with that. With you know, associate them with each other. And then from the local bakery, it makes more sense. Over here as well, being and deflated. What's being being and deflated? The dough. So it doesn't make sense if you put you know that description and you know the subject, the dough, you know, really far away. You know, put them next to each other. So you know, the reader understands that they're referring to each other. So being and deflated. The dough was being beaten and deflated. But then the baker put it at the end. So it's, you know, a lot about, you know, where you place your words and put the words that relate to each other near each other, right? Example two, uh, let's just do this one. Watching the end of the world, our lives flash before our eyes. So, well, again, um, you know, this does not make sense. Uh, it would be better if they wrote, well, while we were watching the end of the world, right, our lives flash before our eyes. So, you know, it's more, it's simply more clear, you know, you're watching the end of the world. I won't, you know, talk about the context here, but, well, if, 
well, if that's what's happening, you know, so be it. While you're doing that, your lives are flashing before your eyes. Um, so, you know, this sense makes much more sense compared to the first one, right? And um, so example three, let, let, let this be the last one, right? So, uh, you know, I'm not being redundant. Um, yeah, keep, keep modifiers right next to the thing that are supposed to describe. I mean, I didn't even read this through, but and that makes a lot of sense. Put the, you know, put the words that relate to each other close to each other. So, I mean, that's really, you know, what it's about. Running fiercely to the bathroom, John's pants drop. So, um, you know, doesn't make much sense. Running fiercely to the bathroom, John dropped his pants. Makes more sense. The pants is John's and, you know, that's the thing that dropped. Um, so, you know. So you can read this description. Yeah, you know, pants can't run by themselves. You know, they can't run to the bathroom. John's pants dropped, running fiercely. So, um, in the first one, you know, you're assuming who's running fiercely? John's pants, but you know, they can't run. So it's running fiercely. John's, and he's the one running fiercely. You have to put John next to it, and then dropped his pants. John did that. So you know, it can be a bit tricky. I'm thinking it's super tricky. You know, if you just read it completely, and um. Most people, when they speak English normally, you know, um, native speakers, they don't make these mistakes because, you know, the, the sense is simply sound incorrect. So, um, you know, that's kind of how you'd work around it, put the words next to each other, read them, you know, see what those adjectives, whatever those actions are describing. Right, running fiercely, John's pants, nope. Running fiercely, John, yeah, that makes more sense. And that John draws his pants. So, yeah. That's how you would kind of, you know, make sure you're not falling into these traps, you know, staying away from these problems. Hopefully you can get them right. You know, this is one of those, you know, grammar problems. Usually these are the easier parts. Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, I said I, I said I wouldn't do another one. Um, I think let's just do one more. Spotted dealing cocaine. The police arrested the drug dealers. So spotted dealing the cocaine, the police. So the police were spotted dealing cocaine? That doesn't make sense, right? The drug dealers were. So you're putting the police next to spotted dealing, dealing cocaine? That doesn't make sense. So, um, could say drug dealers who were arrested by the police. Um, I think that would work too, you know, and resolve this modifier issue. Spotted dealing cocaine. So drug dealers, you know, were arrested by the police. But then that would cause another problem, which is known as passive voice. I think we'll get to that later. So yeah, there would be a voice issue. So um, you could just say the police arrested the drug dealers who were spotted dealing cocaine. Yeah, so same thing, but you know, put the spotted dealing cocaine, put that near the end, fixes the voice issue. That probably doesn't make much sense, but I'll get to that in like you know, one of the later videos. So yeah, that's how I'll deal with that. Okay, now finally, um, that's the end of modifiers. Um, we just did a bunch of practice you know, questions. I don't think we need to do these. Um, I, th I think these are you know good good questions also. So um, do give them a try. So I would just you know leave them to you. Give them a try. There's an answer at the end of the book. Write these as well. Just you know give it a try. A move to run-ons. This you know this is a very common problem. Even you know that you know you, even without the SAT in your essays and whatnot a lot of people make run-ons uh, it's a very very common grammatical mistake um, but it's also very easy to fix ironically but um yeah we'll just get get right into it and as it sounds run on it's just you know ideas that the, you know if you don't put any periods um, in your ideas and you know you just you know, put everything in a single sense if you're putting multiple ideas in a single sense becomes confusing, it doesn't make sense, that's what run-ons are. Put individual ideas into individual senses and things just make a lot more sense. Right? So I took the SATs and I scored a 36. Firstly, um, scored a 36 on the SAT. Oh, I think it's referring to the ACT, but that itself is kind of weird. But, um, I won't, that's, that's not um, what we're talking about, we're talking about run-ons. So I'll just leave it at that. I took the SATs and I scored a 36 and I applied to MIT and I got in. That's There's so many ideas. You took the SATs, that's one idea. Scored a 36, that's another idea. Applied to MIT. 
and you got in. That's a lot of ideas. There's a lot of ands, and, and, and. A lot of repetition. Very boring. Very confusing. It's not a good sense. Let's look at, you know, the bottom one. Still, I don't think it's, a, it's still a good sense. Um, yeah, I mean, they say here it's long, wordy, awkward. But, but, it, is, but it isn't a run-on. I took the SATs, I scored a 36, I applied to MIT. Nothing wrong with, you know, listing things in a list. Um, they're getting rid of the ands, you know, they're very repetitive. Took the SAT, and this, and this, and that. You don't need to put that many ands. Um, you can just put commas, you can put and in the end, and that's perfectly fine. You don't need to put and in the end over here because it's not a list. It was If it was a list, you know, you um, list things one by one, put and in the end, and put the last thing in the list. That's how it works. You don't need to do that over here. Took the SAT, scored a 36, I applied to MIT, I got in. Not a great sense, but it's not a run on. Gets rid of the redundancy. So, yeah. Um, it's hungry about a Chipotle bur burrito. I'll use, yeah, so it's talking about how you could fix run ons. It's all about using punctuation, really. Period. That's literally one of the main ways that you would fix run ons. Sometimes you have way too many ideas, um, and it's you know better to just use periods, split those ideas. But um, you know in more high level level classes you would use semicolons, you know m dashes, commas. You do, you would use a bunch of punctuation to kind of create like a flow um, in senses. So you know create kind of kind of a poetic effect. So you know fixing these run-ons become more complicated you can just insert a period if you want you know you're writing to be poetic sound a bit nicer so you know over here he was hungry he, was, he bought a burrito you know that's a pretty um, monotonous sense it's a boring um, usually in English classes you know you you would you'd use a lot of punctuation and you would get to know punctuation as well you would know how to you know play around them but that's not something the SAT teaches so um, don't have to worry much about that. So again, these periods kind of split these um, run-ons. Right. Uh, conjugation. He was hungry, so he bought a burrito. Much better sense than this uh, period, because you know the hungry, the burrito, they're kind of related, right? Um, if they're more separate, then you would use the period. Um, if they're kind of separate, but not really, would use a semicolon, and um, the comma here, if they're you know kind of connected, you know, you just use a comp and put a conjugation. You know, you know, fa I hope you remember fanboys, yeah, right? If you learned about them, if not, you don't have to care about them because you probably know all these by heart by now. So uh, he was hungry. He bought a burrito. Monotonous, boring, mundane. He was hungry, so he bought a burrito. Um, much better. Uh, sounds nicer, you know, you're hungry, so you bought a burrito. That kind of connects, right? Um, because it explains why you bought a burrito. So um, a comma is just a much better way than a period. doesn't really talk about that, but that's, you know, important to know, right? So well, It's important to know, you should know that. Fanboys, you don't have to memorize, you probably know them really well, like I said. For and nor. So basically, whenever you put a comma, not always, but a lot of times, if they're separate ideas, right? Um, you usually put these words to kind of connect them. He was hungry, so he bought a burrito. So that was kind of the outcome, you know? The outcome, so this is the initial thing that happened, right? And this was the effect due to that thing. You know, you bought a burrito to resolve your hunger. Um, so, for and nor, you know, these are, these are different meanings. These connect different ideas in different ways. You probably know them. And um, these are usually what follow a comma, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. So, don't have to memorize them. Maybe you already learned them. I learned this at school. If you did, you know, that's good. Maybe you memorize them if you, you know, if you're struggling with this. Memorize this list? I don't think so. Um, if you read a lot and uh, interact with English a lot, you probably know these by heart by now. And you know that these, you know, come after a comma so you don't have to memorize um, I disagree with this book over here but yeah be familiar with them like of course so yeah he was hungry therefore he bought a burrito um, that's not conjugation 
and um, uh, you know it might sound right to some people he's hungry therefore but it's not a conjugation it's not fanboys yeah so maybe it might be important to you memorize fanboys because of it but um you know therefore however these things don't don't work when you're trying to connect um, separate ideas like these for and these fanboy terms work way well you probably don't see these often so it might sound obvious like of course it's not there for um, it should be one of the fanboys so it might be obvious to you if not then yeah you know maybe um, fanboys might be uh, good to memorize uh, it's fairly obvious that's not you know the case for me like therefore but I can see you know it can be a bit a bit tricky maybe so yeah yeah however moreover you know these things they, they never you know are used to connect these two ideas um, they are used to connect you know different senses and whatnot kind of you know a slight connection but yeah they're 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 a separate matter however moreover in addition to nevertheless furthermore yeah they, these aren't conjugations yeah, I, I think I spent a bit too much time on that. Semicolon, yeah, you know, it also works. Period works. Comma conjugations work. Semicolons, they're kind of in between that. You use periods if they're, you know, two, you know, really separate ideas. Commas if they're connected, um, you know, or quite connected. Semicolon, somewhere in between. They're, they're kind of connected, but they're not. They're still quite different, so yeah. Um... The SAT does not judge much on which is better to use semicolons, periods, or commas, which you know it's probably important if you're you know if you're writing, but um, not important for the SAT, so it's fine. He was hungry, and you know you don't you never put conjugations and you, know, you don't put things like that after semicolons. They work very similarly to periods. Just use them like periods. Treat them like periods, but you know, treat them as like weaker version of periods. That's how I imagine them. Uh, anyways, well, that's another method. Wording, well, that's that's definitely works. Well, because he was hungry, water burrito. Yep, that definitely works. Let's change the sense itself. Word it differently. You won't have a run on. Um, it's pretty much you're trying to get rid of redundancy and repetition. You're know, you're trying to get rid of all that stuff. That comes with run-ons. You word it differently, you know. You're dealing with a different issue, you know. You you're not. De it's a different question, you know. Um, a different answer, so. Um, so that's a way to fix run-ons. Our relative clauses. These can also be used. You know, these are very. I mean, dude, if you speak English, you probably use these a lot. So, yeah, just get familiar with them. I would say so. You know, we'll just get right to the examples. I think I wasted too much time on this stuff. Um, the teacher yelled at uh, Alicia. She had left her homework. Nope. I mean, this is too sudden. Either put a semicolon there, put a period there, but this is way too sudden. Period who? Because the, the comma, it's not that strong of a link compared to periods and semicolons. So, so think of it like that. You need a conjugation for it to be properly connected. A comma needs the help of a conjugation. Hacker, the hackers copy the company's central databases. These contain, again, same issue, put a which. Commas aren't that strong. Set off yesterday. Russia deployed, yeah. Um, Modify yesterday, Russia. Makes sense. Well, yep. Relates to our, you know, last topic. If I put troops or, like, something else instead of Russia, that would be one of the, you know, modifier questions right modifier problems yeah correct modifier um yesterday russia deployed troops on the border ironic considering what's happening nowadays but no comment um let's just let's just move on um this is a clear violation of the peace agreement well um this is a you know you don't have to say it Russia deployed troops on the border, a clear violation, you know, that idea is already right there. That idea is a clear violation. This, it's a bit too strong, so, you know, it plays by strength. You don't need a this. Russia deployed troops, that concept is already well explained. Comma is strong enough for the, a clear violation, that idea, to follow the Russia deployed troops idea. So, comma works perfectly fine. 
I'll do one more problem. Example 9. I love the game of basketball, however, I don't play it myself. Remember, however, it doesn't work. You need to use one of the fanboys. I love the game of basketball, but I don't like to play it myself. I got them myself, but yeah, myself. Love the game of basketball, however, I don't play it myself. However, I don't play it myself, yeah, however, they're weak. They're usually, you know, used to kind of separate ideas, like I said, between periods, but just as well for semicolons. Cause they're kind of like periods just weaker like I said I love the game of basketball even though I don't play it myself so using that even though to kind of facilitate that comma um, this is more of a different wording uh, the last method just word it differently you don't have to use fanboys even though you know that's different wording works as well that's example nine um, I think you know that's uh, that's enough for run-ons um, I was I was hoping to do phrases um, what is it like uh, fragments but I don't think we have enough time it's, it's, uh, the video is getting a bit long we'll do 16 and I'll, I'll end it right there um, as a doctor Billy consults with patients about their conditions he recommends yep you know there needs to be a stronger link right there um, he recommends a course of action to correct them a semicolon might work there but that's not an option by the conditions and recommend this condition and then you don't put an and after a semicolon right C does not work B so Billy consults with patients about their conditions which he recommends a course of action to correct them that makes no sense whatsoever which the he, cons he consults the conditions which so the which is referring to the conditions which recommends a course it makes no sense that's plain wrong English I hope you instantly cross out D C keep it you know I hope you remember that ands don't follow semicolons right um, C and D are out A key conditions he recommends a course of action and he recommends conditions and and it's not that does not look right either so I'd probably go for it. I said, you know, comments a bit of a weakling, but look at these options that are just way worse. Um, personally, I would, you know, probably better to use semicolons, but like, just like I said, the SAT doesn't test between which is better, commas, semicolons, periods, all of them are technically grammatically correct, some a bit more, but SAT doesn't care about that. Um, so just comma, I think it's a bit weak, but you know, it works well with this sense. As a doctor, Billy consults with patients about their conditions. He recommends a course of action to correct them. Um, so yeah, and would work a bit better, but yeah. Um, it also works decently, but he's a bit better. Uh, the comma, he, yeah. So um, that would be it for that. Fragments, we don't have time. So um, fortunately, we'll, I'll have to leave it for the next time. Frag next class, um, I'll go over fragments and Let's see what's after fragments. Redundancy. Well, I plenty went over redundancy. Um, well, in uh, today's lesson, but uh, we can go over it a bit more in uh, chapter ten. So next lesson. So we have redundancy and fragments for next time. And uh, right now we're you know we're already good enough. Um, I wonder how many uh, how many chapters there are total. Why not? Why don't we check? They are run-ons, pronoun reference placements, redundancy. Well, redundancy we're doing. Um, so let me go over here. Yeah, even subject verb we're doing modifies are fragments. Redundancy we're doing it next, and parallelism. I'll try to cover it all in one lesson, and then all these. In fact. So, I would say, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, you know, I'd say around like 9, 10 videos more and we'll be done with this uh, College Panda course. So, actually not a lot. So, um, this is our third video. And, um, yeah, I'll see you next time. This was a long one, but to make up for the 
for no video for the past like one or two days. So yeah, hope you'll enjoy it and uh, goodbye.